um, you, you are broadly considered. Everybody hears, who knows you, hears your name, thinks about evangelism. That is, you are an evangelist. That is something that we equate you with. Um, and what I don't know is, where did that come from? What, where did that start? When did you feel that change from being like a kid who liked Jesus or a person who liked Jesus into someone who, who wanted to stand on a street corner and tell other people about who he is? As a 16-year-old, I probably had your above average angst existential torment on a daily basis you know you, the pastor was uh, Bill Warnke and you don't know him uh, he's in heaven uh, passed away a long time ago but he stood up in that pulpit and he preached the daylights out of the gospel he blew me away because he was not ashamed of his zeal and passion and love for the Lord Jesus Christ just blew me away and uh Pastor Warnke got me reading the Bible on my own. He got me uh, excited about uh, his relationship with Jesus, and that got me going on a relationship with him, and then that got me going in a relationship with Jesus. And I, I just started inviting my friends who were going through the same 16-year-old angst and trauma I was. I just said, hey, you got to come to church with me. And uh, every, every person that came to church with me was, they were received with that same pastoral warmth. They became the object of his attention, like I was the object of his attention. And, and it was that relationship, that, that energy that came from the relationship that was spontaneous with my becoming a Wells member. And frankly, um, I still got that that energy that comes from relationships. I'm still delighted every single day of my life that um, I accidentally, contrary to my parents' best interests, uh, got into a Wells church and it changed my life. And here but I'm sure there's people listening to this right now going, it's not natural. In fact, it's unnatural for me to go and talk to somebody about my faith. Um, I, I don't feel that energy i love jesus don't get me wrong but i don't know how would you as a pastor or you know just a friend encourage someone who who believes that you know sharing my faith that that's not coming naturally it's it's not really my thing for some reason a little bit if you don't feel a deep and personal need for jesus he's just not very exciting and i i guess that's why i've always really enjoyed the ministry contexts that the lord has been so kind to put me in a, a place where there's trauma a place where there's need uh, a place where i don't have to make a case for god uh, i really like talking to people who don't have a leg to stand on they're they're desperate and uh, that's kind of where i was and and that's in a nutshell why um I, I am to this day still excited about talking to people about jesus i don't know does that make sense that makes that makes plenty of sense let me follow up what uh, the, the trauma aspect, the, the um, crisis aspect, especially re resonates now. Under normal circumstances, uh, I will say, like, maybe even rewind two months, three months ago, like, life's pretty comfortable. And uh, I think maybe that is the, uh, like, the great evil, right, that, uh, you know, Satan gets us to feel is that we are just playing comfortable with life as it is and therefore there's no need for me to deepen my roots nor there's nothing pushing me to go share it with my neighbor because he's comfortable too uh the art challenge in this very comfortable north america or once was and hope again soon will be comfortable north america environment is to learn how to make people psychically existentially uncomfortable so that we can create in them that 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 interest to know Jesus as a very personal, loving, tender rescuer. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing you say, or I think I'm hearing that part, part one of the tools by which you get them, you help people see that need is empathy. Just a, a deep, we would even call it pastoral, like, you know, compassionate um, empathy towards people that is truly interested in them. Uh, uh, I really appreciate what you say, Kent. Um, somebody that doesn't know you or you plural, you three or me might hear you talk and say, oh, empathy is your tactic. Uh, that's, your, that's your trick up your sleeve. 
And every human being on the planet can sniff out fake empathy. And I think what we say to our members is, you know, open yourself to a relationship with anybody. Don't, don't deny yourself the rich blessing and benefit of a relationship with a Muslim, with a Hindu, with a poor person, with a person from a different race, with a rich person. Just open your heart to be to receive this person and and when any human being and i'll say any because i've asked a thousand people if i can tell them about jesus and i only had one person say no to me i mean it takes approximately 47 seconds maybe a minute and a half in arduous circumstances to develop a relationship with two between two people who agree to experiment with being open to each other and and that's not a tactic that's just uh, that's just love. That's trust. That's that's being open to uh, being used by God to drop us in a situation where somebody's incredibly lonely, and just about everybody you guys meet out there that's not a member of your church, they are lonely, and if you just give them the idea that you care about them, they'll be sharing every detail of their life with you in a in a heartbeat. Well, I dare say every student who's had you knows you as the fearless guy who like you're going to talk to anybody and you're not afraid and maybe even not even nervous to go into literally any situation and you like you shared earlier how that maybe started when you were 16 but did you have any oh i don't want to call it regression but did you have any periods of time whether it was at garden homes or any other time where you found yourself shying away from sharing jesus with people for any reason when I was a pastor and I would get crabby, my wife would say, go make an evangelism call. Because I would come back cheerful and happy and I'd come back a better human being than when I left. So she knew, she knew that uh, the more I retreat into my self-pitiful 16-year-old, anxious, tr traumatized self, the less likely I'm going to talk to anybody about anything as exciting as being a follower of Jesus. So I, I think that's a legitimate answer that um, to the degree I'm into myself and my suffering and my self-pity, uh, I'm not going anywhere positive with the, with the gospel. Um, I, I think. Can you talk to the way that, um, you know, pushing yourself to do those things that maybe aren't the most natural, right? How, how that then changes the way, like approaching other people in this way, in an evangelistic way, then changes the way that you turn around and, and personally approach Jesus or approach yeah. God. I think the whole accountability thing, Kent, is where we can be Christians together and, and not be a bad representation of what Christianity could be to the world, but let's, we're, let's help each other be the best thing together that our witness could be to the world. And let's intentionalize it. Let's be strategic about it. You know, out of the fullness of your heart, your mouth speaks. So if you're just like mainlining light into your heart, then by and large, it's mostly light what's going to come out of your mouth, right? But when we separate ourselves from that, the, the greatest danger, and you guys uh, heard You've heard me say this before, and I'll just take a moment to remind you that I'll, I'll say it to you again, that when we get away from our identity, when we get away from the word that feeds that identity, then we start attaching identity to something different than our relationship with Jesus. Just to, to the degree I'm just thinking about the stuff the Holy Spirit gives me to think about, I'm probably going to be a healthier, happier, more let's talk about Jesus kind of guy. But if I let that slip out and my head's full of that, that uh, selfish 16 year old that is afraid that the world is going to come crashing down around his shoulders. Well, guess what I'm thinking about? 